Hi everyone, this is Samir at the side. Welcome to my channel. I am back again with another video to my low level design series. In this video, we will be coding the low level design of an ATM machine. I have used runtime polymorphism, solid design principles, multi-level inheritance and factory design pattern to come up with a robust solution for the given problem statement. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in today's video, as I have already said, we will be discussing in detail about the low-level design code for ATM. This video, we will be creating robust solution for the low-level design of an automated tailor machine. In the screens, you can currently see the basic set of requirements that our design will completely focus on. I will quickly go through the requirements one by one. The first requirement present here is the user should be able to swipe a card. Then the user should be able to withdraw funds from account of any bank whatsoever. It need not be the bank of which the particular ATM is. The user should also be able to deposit cash and check. Similarly, the user should be able to transfer fund from a source account to a destination account. And then last but not the least, the user should be able to check for their balance. In today's video, we will try and implement a solution adhering to solid design principles to satisfy all the requirements that you can see in the screen. So without further waiting, let's get started with coding. As I've always told in all my previous low-level design videos, for starting the low-level design of any system that is given at hand, we should always understand what is the base system that we are trying to provide a design of. If we can come up with the base set of classes that actually identify that particular system that is in place, we will have a good starting point from which we can then iteratively create all the other related classes and design the entire solution. In this case, we will start by implementing the ATM class. If you can see on the screen, I have written down the ATM class present here. The ATM class rightly so should contain an ATM ID, which will be used to uniquely identify this particular class. Apart from that, what an ATM contains is the address or the location of that particular ATM. Apart from that, an ATM will also have several other complex objects that will make up the entire ATM. For example, an ATM will have a cash dispenser to give out cash. An ATM will have a screen in which you can see the display and interact with it. An ATM will have a card reader, which is a physical reader, but it will also have a software touch point, which will be used to read the card whenever a user swipes the card or inserts the card into the card reader. An ATM will have a keypad, which the user will use to give certain inputs. Apart from that, we are also having three other complex objects present here. One is the object for depositing cash. Second is the object for depositing check. And third is the bank service object, which will essentially tell us the bank of a particular ATM. Now, as we have already done in all the previous videos, we will start by defining all the complex objects that we have written here. We will start by defining the address object. As I have already mentioned, the address object will contain the pin code or the zip code, the street, the city, the state, and the country. Now we will go ahead and define the cash dispenser class. The cash dispenser class, if you can see in the screen right now, true to its name, will have one API that our ATM class will use to actually give out cash from the ATM. The API will take in as input the amount and based upon the availability of associated denominations inside that ATM, it will make sure that the amount that it takes as input, that much amount of money gets dispensed out from the actual physical cash dispenser attached to the ATM. Since it is working with the denomination of the currency as well as the number of actual currency bills, I have added a particular data member to this complex class. This data member is basically cache available data member, which is basically a hash map. Hash map will be of type cache type and list of cache, where cache type is an enum that contains the denomination of that particular cache. For basic use cases, it can be 10, 50, 100, etc. 
and the list of cash will actually be the list of single currency bills present inside the ATM. I will quickly go ahead and define the cash type enum. As I have said, the cash type enum will contain cash type of let's say 50, 100, 500 denominations. It will vary based upon the locale in which we are implementing this particular ATM for and here we have assumed that 50, 100 and 500 are valid denominations of the local currency. Then we will go ahead and quickly define the cash class. The cash class will obviously contain the cash type and the serial number of that particular currency bill. Then we will go ahead and quickly define the screen class. Screen class will be a complex object and will only contain one particular method which will be the display method which will take in as input some message that the ATM wants to display on the screen. This message can be a thank you message, an error message or any other kind of message that the ATM wants to display in the screen. There can be other methods as well but for simplicity let us restrict it to a single display API that the ATM can use to display any kind of message whatsoever on the screen. Now I will go ahead and quickly define the next class which will be the card reader class. The card reader class will have one API which is basically fetch card details that will be used by the ATM to actually extract the card related details based on the type of card that we are inserting inside the card reader and this particular API will return a complex object which is card info that will contain all the card related details that can be extracted from the particular card. Now I will go ahead and define the card info class. The card info class will obviously contain card type which basically is an enum that will state whether or not a particular card is a debit card or a credit card. It will contain the bank information for which particular bank this card belongs to. It will contain the card number, the expiry date, the CVV number which is a three digit number present at the back side of your card and the withdrawal limit of that particular card. Be it a debit card or a credit card, both of them will be having some kind of limit and that limit is associated with this particular float data member. I will go ahead and quickly define the card type enum which will be debit card and credit card. Then I will quickly go ahead and define another component of the ATM which is the keypad which again similar to screen can contain multiple APIs but for the sake of simplicity and for the focus of requirements that are in hand we will just limit it to one particular API which is the get input API which will take the input from the keypad that the user inputs and return it as string. Then we will quickly go ahead and define the bank complex object that we had introduced in the card info class. The bank object will contain the name of the bank, the address or the location of the bank as well as a list of ATMs. Since a bank can be associated with multiple number of ATMs, we decided to keep list of ATM as ATM list inside the bank class. One thing that we need to understand here is that the ATM cannot contain any customer related data because that will be too huge and too varied amount of data to actually contain inside the ATM. So in order to validate any customer request that the customer puts in, the ATM consequently interacts with the bank's APIs that are exposed to the ATM to actually get the customer details, to actually execute these transactions and to actually validate and verify whether or not the particular customer as well as whether or not the particular card is actually a valid card of the bank or not. Hence, I will go ahead and define the bank service interface. The bank service interface will contain three APIs. One, that we will use to validate whether or not the particular user is actually a valid user. We will use this API to actually authenticate the PIN that the user inputs. So because of this, this particular API will be containing two input parameters, one the card info and the other one the PIN. And it will return a boolean which will be true or false based upon whether or not the particular customer, whether or not the particular user is a valid user or not. The second API will be the get customer details API that will basically fetch the entire customer detail with respect to the card information that was fetched by the card reader. Hence, this particular API will take in as input the card info object and will return as output the customer object. The third API, the third API will be the execute transaction API. This particular API will take in as input a transaction object that needs to be executed 
as well as the customer object on which the particular transaction needs to be executed. And based upon the execution of that particular transaction, it will return a transaction detail object that will contain the entire detail of the executed transaction. Since this is an interface, there will be implementing classes. These implementing classes will be bank specific classes, which will in turn call the bank APIs that are exposed to do all these stuff. For example, let us assume there are two banks now, Bank A and Bank B. Hence, we will have corresponding implementation classes for Bank A and Bank B, which will internally call these bank APIs that are exposed with this particular ATM. So I will go ahead and quickly define the two classes, uh, Bank A and Bank B class that will be implementing the bank service interface. These classes will be concrete classes and hence it will contain the implementation of all the three methods that has been present in the particular interface, the bank service interface. Now we will go ahead and define a factory class which will be used to actually vend out the object for the bank service concrete class implementation which means the bank service factory class will have an API which is get bank service object that will return a well-formed object of bank A or bank B in our case with respect to the card info that it is getting. If you look closely, the return type is of type bank service. Since the return type is of type bank service, here we are using runtime polymorphism to actually allocate bank A object or bank B object to the bank service reference based upon the input card info that we are getting. And once we get that object, be it a bank A object or bank B object, we can then use that object to call the corresponding methods of bank A and bank B and execute the transactions that we want to execute. Why we are using a factory method here instead of actually writing the code to understand which object should be instantiated is to just make the code reusable and completely simple. We have decoupled the implementation of understanding what kind of bank object is needed by creating a separate factory class and defining the method get bank service object there. So any change to the way we determine which bank object should be called will be done in this particular factory class itself and we need not change it everywhere else if we had implemented it in such a way that we had kept this logic inside our regular code. Hence we are using factory pattern here to actually give us a well-formed object based upon some input types. Now we will go ahead and define the customer complex object that we have encountered here. The customer complex object is the object that is returned when we call the API get customer details based upon the card info that we are passing from a bank class. The customer class will contain the first name of the customer, the last name of the customer, obviously the card information, the account details, the bank service object, as well as the customer status. Customer status is an enum which will house the status of a customer which is basically an information that says whether or not the particular customer is active or inactive or they have been blocked or some other kind of status that we want to maintain there. We will go ahead and quickly define the account class. The account class will contain the account number as well as available balance which will be floats in nature. Obviously, this account class can further be subdivided into savings and current accounts, but that is beyond the scope of this particular set of requirements that we have for ourselves. But yes, we can further subdivide this particular account class into different types of accounts and so on and so forth. Now we will define the enum customer status, which as I have already told, will house blocked, active or closed status for this particular customer. Now we will go ahead and define the transaction complex object that we have introduced in our bank service APIs. This transaction complex object will basically house the detail to do different kinds of transactions. As per our requirements, we need to do basically three types of transaction. One is a deposit transaction, two is a withdrawal transaction, and three is the transfer transaction. We will quickly go ahead and define the transaction concrete class. The transaction concrete class will obviously contain a unique identifier in the form of transaction ID. Then it will contain the source account or the account from which the particular transaction will take place as well as a transaction date. Now we have defined that the transaction can be primarily of three types. 
the deposit, the withdraw, as well as a transfer type of transaction. So what we will do is basically we will quickly go ahead and define the concrete classes of these three diff major different types of transactions. Since these are a type of transaction, this is an is or relationship between the two and a parent child relationship can be established here. So we will be using inheritance here as well. I will go ahead and define the deposit class, which will basically extend transaction, which means all the data members of transaction will also be a data member of the deposit class, as well as it introduces another data member, which is the amount present here for that particular deposit. Now, as per our requirements, we know we should be supporting two different kinds of deposits. One is check deposits, the other one is cash deposits. So here we can also see that this particular deposit class can be further subdivided into two different kinds of deposits. So here also we establish an is or relationship, a parent child relationship, and will again employ inheritance. If we go ahead and see, we have written two separate classes, one the check deposit class and the other one is the cash deposit class which essentially extends our deposit class and has two unique methods that are associated with check deposit and cash deposit respectively. The check deposit method contains the get check method which returns the check that is being deposited and the get cash method returns the list of cash that is being deposited by that particular user. We will go ahead and define the withdraw transaction as well as the transfer transaction. Both of them are complex objects and will contain some data members that are unique to that particular class. In this case, the withdraw kind of a transaction has a float amount present that allows the user to withdraw the said amount from a transaction. Then the transfer transaction, apart from having this amount present inside it, it will also contain a destination account information which is basically the destination account to which this particular amount should be directed to. So as we have seen here, we have used multi-level inheritance to actually model the different layers of transaction that is present here. We start with the top layer of transaction class, then go to its next layers of deposit transaction, withdraw transaction and transfer transaction and then subdivide the deposit transaction into further two categories the check deposit and the cash deposit. Now we will go ahead and define the transaction detail object. The transaction detail object will contain the transaction status, the source account number, the date, the type of transaction and the transaction ID. And then we will quickly define the two enums that we have introduced inside the transaction detail class that is the transaction status and the transaction type. The transaction status will be basically pending cancelled success or error and transaction type will be basically the three types of transactions that are available to us for our requirement here that is the withdraw, deposit and transfer. By this we come to an end of the low level design code of ATM. Here we have used solid design principles along with factor design pattern, runtime polymorphism and multi-level inheritance to come up with a very robust low-level design code for ATM. I sincerely hope that you like my video and you are liking my series. If you do like it, then please hit that like button and share it as much as possible so that many people can get benefited from it. If you're new to the channel and have not subscribed, then please, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload such quality content for you guys. I sincerely hope you loved my video. Please comment down below what more different kind of videos you want me to make. What more different kind of concepts you want me to explain. And I will definitely try my level best to fulfill them. Thank you so much guys for watching this much. Lots of love to you. Take care. As always, I have attached the source code in the description below. Not only this, I have given the link for my Instagram channel in the description below. Follow me there and hit me up with a DM saying that you want to be a part of my mock interview series. I will be conducting completely free mock interview series in the coming weeks. I will be dropping a video shortly. Please, please, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Show some love, guys. This is Swamiajit bidding goodbye. Das Vedanya.